Outside of the World Cup, there is no bigger stage in international football for a young player to make their mark than at the European Championships. My mind goes back most clearly to Euro 2004, which was really a breakout tournament in many respects for the likes of Wayne Rooney, Cristiano Ronaldo and Petr Cech, all of whom went on to become world-class players and among the finest in their position for a generation. But then you also have examples like Briel Mbolo at Euro 2016, whose impressive performances earned him a big money move to Schalke, where injuries disrupted his flow, and he is still looking to really rebuild his career now at Borussia Mönchengladbach. With that in mind, I thought it would be interesting to take a look at the last seven players to have won the Young Player of the Tournament Award at the European Championships, seeing where they are now and how their careers panned out. There was just one problem. UEFA only introduced the Young Player of the Tournament Award in 2016, meaning there has only actually ever been one winner. Not to be deterred, I decided to go back through the tournaments with a fine-tooth comb and hopefully with some degree of scientific method and pick out the player who I think would have won the Young Player of the Tournament Award at each of the tournaments in question had it actually existed. I am using UEFA's own criteria, which is that the player had to be, at most, 22 years old. There will be some honourable mentions thrown in when necessary for good measure. Without further ado then, here is the best young player at the last seven European Championships, where are they now? Renato Sanchez. Lil. Getting us started is the only actual recipient of the Young Player of the Tournament Award at a European Championships, and an extreme deserving winner at that. Renato Sanchez only made his Benfica debut during the 2015-16 season, but Fernando Santos had seen enough by the end of that campaign to feel that the 18-year-old was worthy of a call-up to his squad for Euro 2016. Santos was vindicated in that judgement as Sanchez gradually wormed his way into the Portugal starting 11 as the tournament went on. One of only three 18-year-olds at the finals, Sanchez came on as a substitute in two out of the three group games. He came on as a sub once again against Croatia before finally earning a starting berth against Poland. Sanchez scored Portugal's only goal of the game in what was his first start before converting from 12 yards out in the shootout against Poland. He was undroppable from that moment on, starting in both the semi-final and in the final, playing a pivotal role with his energy and dynamism in midfield as Portugal lifted their first major trophy in the nation's history. Sanchez's extraordinary performances for a man of his age simply could not go unnoticed, and sure enough, he joined Bayern Munich that summer in a deal worth 35 million euros up front and a potential 80 million euros subject to add-ons. It seems unlikely that too many of those add-ons or clauses were ever actually triggered, were they performance related at least, since Sanchez's time in Bavaria was ultimately a little underwhelming. He made 53 appearances for the club in total, though only 35 in the league, in addition to enduring a really poor spell on loan at Swansea City over the course of his three seasons. In 2019, Sanchez joined Lille, and now aged 23, was starting to see signs of the player people expected Sanchez to become in his 20s. He has been a pretty frequent fixture for Lille this season, and by the time this video comes out, you will know whether he just got his hands on a remarkable league and title, or whether he and Lille just missed out. But either way, a great achievement. Mario Balotelli. Monza. From here on in, the inclusions are all on me, but I think this one is pretty irrefutable. Going into Euro 2012, and still in school at that time I should add, I had spoken in quite disparaging terms about Mario Balotelli. He had just enjoyed his best goalscoring campaign at Manchester City, though not without incident, and I felt people were getting a bit carried away with him. He made me look very foolish at the finals in Poland and the Ukraine. Aged 21 at the time, Balotelli played like a world-class centre forward at the absolute peak of his powers. His movement was brilliant, he had confidence coursing through his veins, and his performance against Germany, in which he created that iconic celebration, was absolutely outstanding. The way he took his second goal in particular was pretty special, and no one scored more goals than him at that tournament. Unfortunately, in the nearly nine years since, Balotelli's career has stalled, faltered, been reinvigorated, and then faltered once again. In the six months after that tournament, Balotelli only scored one goal in 14 Premier League games for Manchester City, before returning to AC Milan. A bright spell at the San Siro, 
back at the San Siro, I should say, was followed by an ill-fated move to Liverpool, and after breathing new life into his career in France, Balotelli has struggled once again since returning to the Italian game. He was relegated from Serie A with his boy club Brescia last season, and this season, he narrowly missed out on an immediate return to the top flight of Italian football, with Monza just having lost in the semi-finals of the Serie B playoffs. Luka Modric, Real Madrid We are only three players in, and three tournaments in, yet we've already reached a player who is a very seasoned veteran of the game these days, now aged 35. Yes, Alfie, that is how time works. Congratulations. Again, I think this one would have been a bit of a slam dunk for Luka Modric, with no other young players really coming close to him at Euro 2008. Having topped qualifying Group E, in which England finished third, Croatia put in a strong showing at the finals in Austria and Switzerland. They topped their group ahead of both Germany and the host Austria, before taking Turkey all the way to penalties in the quarterfinals, where they only managed to convert one of their four penalties from 12 yards out. Modric was among the contingent to miss for Croatia, but the fact he stepped up and took the first penalty at the age of only 22 tells you all you need to know about the confidence and authority the youngster already had within that squad. Already a key man for Croatia, Modric won the Man of the Match award against Germany in the group stage and was dubbed the Croatian Cruyff by the international press. Starring for Dinamo Zagreb at the time, Modric had already agreed to join Tottenham Hotspur after the finals having come close to signing for Newcastle before that. Every time he has moved clubs, it has taken Modric just a little bit of time to adjust. But ultimately, his quality always shines through. At Tottenham, he had to adjust to the rigours of football in the Premier League before becoming one of the best number 10s in the division. At Real Madrid, he spent a season as Meza Ozil's deputy before flourishing in a slightly deeper role alongside Tony Kroos, where he still finds himself now. Modric is now a four-time Champions League winning Ballon d'Or recipient who reached a World Cup final with Croatia in Russia in 2018. Aged 35, he remains one of world football's outstanding midfield players in tandem with Tony Kroos. Wayne Rooney, Derby County Manager I sort of gave the game away with this one during the introduction, but there would have been three outstanding candidates for young player of the tournament at Euro 2004, had the award existed. Rising star Cristiano Ronaldo played a key role in Portugal's run to the final, scoring his first two international goals at the tournament before being left in tears when Portugal lost to Greece in the final. Petr Cech did an outstanding job for the Czech Republic as they topped their group and reached the semi-finals, where they, again, lost only to Greece. However, ahead of both of them, there was no young player who was more majestic or more electric at Euro 2004 than Wayne Rooney. The star of the group stages, Rooney scored twice against both Switzerland and Croatia, and it was apparent to all of Europe that England had a serious talent on their hands. Had Rooney not been forced off injured in the quarterfinals against Portugal, I think it remains a distinct possibility that England would have won that game. Such was the importance of the teenager in Sven Goran Eriksson's side. I mean, the man who replaced him was Darius Vassell. I'll just leave it at that. Rooney obviously went on to become England and Manchester United's all-time record goalscorer, despite a relatively early decline, European departure, and retirement, which was perhaps somewhat attributable to his incredibly early breakthrough. It's worth noting that Rooney is basically the exact same age as Luka Modric, he just broke through so much earlier and faded so much earlier. The same goes for Cristiano Ronaldo, who is just one year older than Modric, though he really hasn't faded over the years. Rooney retired from playing football in January 2021 when he was appointed permanently as the new Derby County boss. He very narrowly kept the Rams in the championship this season, at a club whose future remains under something of a cloud. Thierry Henry, unemployed manager. It's a battle between two of the finest forwards of a generation from Euro 2000, namely Raul Gonzalez and Thierry Henry. Both men were aged 22 at the time of the finals in Belgium and the Netherlands, and both were absolutely sensational. Raul had scored 29 goals for Real Madrid the previous season, meanwhile Henri had scored 26 in his sensational debut campaign at Arsenal. They actually met in the quarter-finals, which France won 2-1, before going on to win the tournament thanks to another 2-1 win against Italy in the final. 
Raul, who now manages Real Madrid Castilla, earns a very honourable mention. But had the award existed at the turn of the millennium, I am almost certain that it would have gone to Henri. Not only was Henri France's top scorer with three goals, he scored the equaliser against Portugal in France's all-important semi-final, and he won three Man of the Match awards. Both Henri and Raul made UEFA's bloated team slash squad of the tournament, but Henri was arguably second only to Zinedine Zidane at the finals overall. Henri went on to become both France and Arsenal's all-time leading goalscorer, a little like Wayne Rooney with both England and Manchester United, and also like Rooney, he left the European game fairly early on. Aged 43 now, like Raul and Rooney, he too has gone into management, having worked under Roberto Martinez with Belgium before stints at Monaco and Montreal Impact. Right now, he is out of work, having previously been the favourite to take over at AFC Bournemouth before missing out on that job to Jonathan Woodgate. Patrick Kluivert, Barcelona Academy Director The Netherlands were uniquely blessed in the young player department at Euro 96, and not only do I think that the three finest candidates at Euro 96 were all Dutch, I also think this is the toughest decision in this entire video. The players in question are Patrick Kluivert, Clarence Seedorf, and Jordi Cruyff, aged 19, 20, and 22 respectively at the time. Kluivert, who is the youngest of the trio, also played the least football, only starting one of the Netherlands' four games at the finals, as they exited at the quarter-final stage against France. Meanwhile, Seedorf started three out of the four games, and Cruyff started in every single one. Nonetheless, I still think Kluivert was the most impressive. He scored the two goals that fired the Netherlands to the finals in their qualification playoff against the Republic of Ireland, but was prevented from starting most games at the finals itself due to a knee injury. That didn't stop him coming off the bench to score against England though, with the goal that saw the Orange progress ahead of Scotland by virtue of a superior goal difference. Another sensational prospect who had a magnificent career, but suffered premature burnout, Clivert is best remembered for the 122 goals that he scored across six seasons and in 257 games for FC Barcelona. In 1995, when he was aged only 19, Clivert crashed his car in Amsterdam while speeding in a collision which killed one woman and left another injured. He was convicted of death by dangerous driving, but was only sentenced to perform 240 hours of community service. Clivert retired in 2008 to go into coaching, and he now serves as an academy director back at his old club Barcelona. Thomas Brolin, Riding Zebras Alright, I can't be sure that's what he's doing right now, but it's certainly what he was doing here. Thomas Brolin is an icon of the 1990s, who enjoyed a rise which was just as dramatic as his fall. Brolin shot to fame in 1990, when he scored against Brazil at the World Cup, and signed for Parma in Syria. He was just 20 years old at the time, which, as the mathematicians among you will be able to work out in your heads, means that he was 22 by the time Euro 92 came around. In a tournament which I covered in extraordinarily beautiful detail in my recent Denmark documentary, and those are my own words by the way, Brolin was actually the tournament's joint top scorer. He scored three times in three different games, two of them being winners which saw Sweden reach the knockout stages on home soil, and the last ultimately proving to be a consolation goal in the semi-final against Germany. Brolin was even more impressive two years later at the 1994 World Cup in the United States, where he made the team of the tournament and ended up finishing fourth in 1994 Ballon d'Or voting. However, just 12 months later, Brolin's career fell apart following a disastrous big money move from Parma to Leeds United. Brolin claims that he was bullied at Allen Road, and he had a horrific time with injuries. His career all but ended at the age of 26, which was a tragic fate for one so talented. But Brolin's outstanding early years at Parma, and with the Sweden national team in particular, are still very fondly remembered. Following retirement, Brolin played plenty of poker, including at the Poker World Series, before giving up that gig as well. He's also had a series of businesses ranging from restaurants to real estate and music videos, but I'm not quite sure what he is doing right now. I just couldn't tell you. I mean, maybe he's riding a zebra, because, you know, why not? That is it for today's video, but thank you all very much as ever for watching. 
Hit the like button if you enjoyed today's video, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section, and make sure that you are subscribed and have notifications turned on for HITC7s, particularly with all this incredible European Championship coverage that is coming up, and also just for the brilliant videos that are on the channel always. You know, they're just great. So, uh, also, you can find me on social media, Twitter or Instagram, the username is just at HITC7s on both. You can follow me if you really want to, I'm fine with that. Otherwise, my account would be private. 